Yeah. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the first in a series of 12 um, podcasts uh, that we're doing. And as you know, people are waking up now. They're becoming um, uh, aware of spirit and spirit is calling you. And what we want you to do is to unlock your full potential in connecting to spirit. Becoming, we hope, world-class spiritual channel, medium and healers. Both of us, uh, Michael and myself, uh, each have uh, many decades of experience. We have seen and been through it all. And in this loving, caring, heart-centered, open and honest series, we're going to discuss and share our individual journeys, the awesome, the amazing, as well as the scary and the ugly. <laughs> and if you're really, truly committed to working to, in, uh, with the spiritual realm, it is imperative that you know and understand the things, the keys that we have both learned. This information we feel is priceless and the valuable lessons and the information that we will impart and share with you is so precious that a monetary price has not been set, but you may donate if you wish. And uh, we'll have a banner showing that shortly. So you may ask yourselves who should attend and whether you're a beginner or someone with many years of experience, this series will provide a firm foundation and understanding of the spiritual realm. We'll show you different ways to connect to spirit in a safe and respectful manner and understand the dangers and pitfalls of opening up to the spiritual dimensions. Uh, and that's something um, that I know is very close to Michael's heart, very close to mine as well because there are organisations that uh, just don't believe that there are negative energies out there. Uh, we're going to show you ways as well to keep yourself energetically clear, centred, grounded and protected. And one of the first things we need to be aware of is protection. That is of the utmost importance. And if you've ever been um, connected to anything uh, negative, then, then you'll understand exactly uh, what I mean. So um, here, here is Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> How you doing, Leo? I just okay. wanted to, I just wanted to share with the audience that you and I had a very, very interesting talk a number of months ago, and that talk touched both of our hearts because both of us have many decades of experience. We've seen a lot of things. Uh, we've been part of many organizations. We've uh, helped many people. And we've seen the pitfalls um, and the challenges with, number one, being spiritual, <clears throat> and number two, doing our best to open up to be of service to spirit. Yeah. <clears throat> so... In that conversation, uh, we both talked about, gee, if only we had a mentor, if only we had a guide, if only we had someone to help us, support us, to show us the way, hold our hands, to answer questions, and to give us, and I don't want to say shortcuts, but to help us to travel the journey in a good and sacred way. Uh, both of us know people that have sat in circle, studied spirituality for decades, and some people for 30, 40 years, and still do not receive messages, and still are, um, and other people who receive messages who are very sick and very challenged financially, health-wise, and other ways. So Leo and I were in the conversation, and we said, you know, We've got all this ex expertise, all this information, all this experience, and it's like, how do we serve humanity? How do we help people? How do we help the light and the spiritual energies that want to come through us, that want to share information? How do we build that bridge so the bridge is solid and so that people have the courage, the confidence, um, how can we hold their hands? And I, I mean that in a good and sacred way um, because many of us have been on this journey, but how many people can we really talk to? How many people have traveled the world? How many people have been in hundreds and hundreds of different learning experiences and spiritual, spiritual uh, experiences? Um, back to you, Leo. I, I, I get a, 
I get going and I get passionate about this stuff. I think that's one thing that really draws us together, you know, that passion, that energy that we have um, um, between us. And 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 I think you're right. You, you know, sometimes people um, look at mediums and it's not always immediately, um, uh, they're not always immediately aware of how much training and how many years, um, decades experience that that person may have. And, and I think one of the nice things that we can do is that we can show, you know, the mistakes that we've made, the experiences that we've had when, when we've realised we've learned something and that, you know, in that process of learning, which does take time, um, we see the rights and the wrongs and and um, and we get that kind of overview of it. And I think what we can do yep. is to to try and cut out some of the wrongs when there's no need to make that that mistake or, or make that particular journey. And so um, I'm fairly reluctant to use the word shortcut as well because shortcut yeah. it implies you're missing bits, which we're not going to. Um but, you know, um, if we can show people a more direct route with all the um, the safety and the freedom from pitfalls um, involved um, that, that we have um, in our experience, then I think that, that that is a really, really good thing. Leo, can you give your background and experience so people understand where you're coming from, and then I'll share my experience where I'm coming from, so people understand that you and I even know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. Um, uh, I had my first experience when I was um, at the age of two, and I was walking between my parents, and we'd just been to see um, some family. And uh, we used to live in the east end of London, and uh, there's a cemetery there called Manor Park Cemetery. And uh, we were walking back, and it was evening uh, one summer, so it was still quite light. And I sensed an energy behind me, and so I turned round, and what I saw was uh, l like a mist that rose from the pla uh, from the pavement. And through the wrist, uh, mist came this gentleman, and he just stood up and presented himself. And being so young and still connected to spirit um, very much, uh, because as an average up to about the age of six, we're more connected to spirit that, than, than the earth, and then there's that transition. So I didn't find that um, odd at all. And my dad asked me what what I was looking at. And I said, there's a strange man behind us. So we all turned back and none of us could see him. And then I thought that was a bit odd. Turned around again, there he was again. And this happened several times. And the thing I suppose that strikes most people is I didn't find that appearance and that entrance strange. Uh, he was wearing Victorian clothes. Uh, and that's the remark that I made. Um, that there's a funny man standing behind us. And so that reintroduction to spirit, in a sense, in a more waking form, uh, started um, my spiritual journey. And it, it, it has gone on from there. Um, so, so that was, I think, a very loving and gentle way uh, to be reintroduced to spirit in a, in a more waking sense. And... Uh, from that age, I, I experienced many things, um, physical mediumship. Um, I was levitated many times. Uh, I, I saw all kinds of wonderful things. And uh, one thing that really um, sticks out was a small hand uh, about six inches off the floor that pushed my bedroom door open. So my childhood in that sense w was a wonderful, wonderful thing many experiences, astral traveling. Um, I think most the, most experiences that people may read of or, or become aware of, um, I would have had in that, certainly in the, up to the age of about 10. Really good, Leo. And what I want to say about Leo is he's got a huge heart. And Leo really, really cares. And because he cares, the messages that come through are extremely helpful, and he's bridging the Earth dimension with other dimensions. 
Um, and I want to honor his guides and teachers. Leo and I come together. We're very different, yet we're our hearts and our commitment to service. I got tears in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> is, is what is what builds the bridge and what's made me so emphatic that I wanted to do this series with Leo. Now, in some ways, Leo and I are very different. Um, I started having, and I'll call it my intuition, coming to me at a very young age when there were times when my father uh, was uh, abusive or um, I was getting warnings from spirit. Uh, I was told that I had a near-death experience around age three. Um, however, at age seven, I started hearing, I heard a voice come into the room and um, I, it was so clear and so specific that it freaked me out. And I don't remember ever telling my parents about it or anything else, but it told me to go to a specific country and that I was, uh, I needed to go there, leave my family right then and there and go to this foreign country, which I'm not going to go into detail about right now. Um, later, um, I went the traditional route. So I have two years of engineering, a bachelor's in business and a master's in international management. My background was running companies and corporations doing corporate turnaround. Now, what's interesting is that um, apparently spirit wanted me to get grounded in business. And then all of a sudden the spiritual started really taking over quickly. Um, uh, back in uh, 1980, the early 1980s, I was living in Dallas, Texas, and the Native Americans used to come through town and do ceremonies and whatnot and teach. And the first time I touched the Native American pipe, the first time I did a sweat lodge ceremony, it's like, I know this, I'm home. It was, ah, oh, you know. And so my journey has taken me now uh, to over 50 countries. I've studied and spent time with the Native American medicine people, Canadian medicine people, Eskimo shamans, Peruvian shamans, worked for weeks on end with the psychic surgeons from the Philippines, helping them in the healing rooms, been with the Maoris in New Zealand. Um, I have been with thousands of different shamans, medicine men, psychics, whatever it may be, uh, and the reason I went was not to become a healer. I mean, I had no courage and confidence in myself. I wanted to heal my own emotional pain. Mm -hmm. And that journey uh, led me to different area, these different areas. And then I started remembering other times and places when I did the healing work. And then my gifts opened up, my sight opened up. Uh, my first book, um, The Healing Energy of Your Hands or Hands on Spiritual Healing, was published by Finhorn and became an international bestseller in 12 languages. Then I produced another book called Mastering the Human Experience, uh, Your Soul's Journey on Earth. Oop, I don't have those here. And um, now I'm writing a book. It's going to be published within the next month on intuition, uh, Your Silent Thunder. So this is all of a of a journey. Um, and I've been very grateful that I've been invited to work alongside of medical doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, teach them, and also help their clients when they couldn't figure out what was going on. They'd call me and I tune in many times on the phone and just say, well, this is what's really going on with the person. This is what's contaminating their energy field. So in this, these series of podcasts, uh, Leo and I will give you a wealth of knowledge and whether or not you've traveled the world or you've just, uh, or you haven't traveled the world and you have a lot of curiosity and commitment to learning. Um, between Leo and I, we carry a lot of knowledge um, or should I say, Leo, we're both old, old people <laughs> or older people. Um, so, so um Please feel free. I'm going to invite everyone to please send in your uh, questions. Uh, let us know some of your experiences. Um, Leo, I even see this potentially becoming a book, a training manual. Um, 
as well as as everything else. So back to you, Leo. Um, I, I can see that happening. I, I've actually written a book, which now is, um, I think, about seven or eight years old, uh, because spirit do work in, in strange ways. And uh, the title of the book is uh, um, Developing Mediumship um, Using the New Energies. And uh, it needs a bit of updating now because things have happened. Um, but I, I can see this course becoming um, a training manual of itself. Um, but also, I, I think a book between us would um, would certainly be fantastic. And one of the things that's really inspired me in what you've said is that at such a young age, you knew you had to travel and and you did it. Because I think sometimes, you know, we, we get touched by spirit and uh, uh, they will send us somewhere and we either don't have the means or the courage to just uproot and follow that path. And your story has been a, an absolutely fascinating one. Uh, just to hear you very briefly speak about some of those experiences and where you've been, who you've met. Um, it, it's a wonderful, um, <laughs> especially just saying to me, it's a wonderful travelogue of spirituality. Um, which uh, seemed to be a lovely phrase. And, and I think that that is something, um, ag again, that, you know, we get inspired, but there isn't the means to do it or the opportunity to do it. And I think it's wonderful that you've managed to do that. Um, and that itself is inspiring. Um, you've learned so many things that uh, I feel in a, in a comparatively short time, that would take at least a lifetime um, to to engage with just some of those subjects. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, we see courses and we see people and, and we save up and we go on courses and, and, and that's great and, and we're working in the meantime, but it's kind of like blocks of stuff. Whereas w what's happened to you, I think, has been a continuous thread um, of amazing experiences. Well, Leo, the word that comes to me is immersion. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I was dropped into situations where um, where I was spending 24 hours a day with these people. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I was able to experience many things. And, um, you know, I, I want to make it clear um, that when I started this path, I had absolutely zero confidence in myself. I was very scared, very insecure, very, you know, I'm an empath. I've had menstrual cramps. I've gotten drunk when the people behind me were drinking water. So I'm hyper, hyper, hyper sensitive. So being immersed in these different cultures with different people uh, was on one level, very liberating and educational, and in some ways, and at other times, very traumatic for me. Um, and I need to make it clear, there are many times I sat there, and thank God I had a credit card, because I didn't have the cash. And I said, should I do this trip or not? On one trip, my first trip to Southeast Asia, um, I bit the bullet. And I was really scared because all I had was my credit card. And I went to Nepal. I went to Thailand. I went to Malaysia. I went to Hong Kong. Uh, I went to Australia, went to um, New Zealand. And when I came home, Leo, and this is a very, um, uh, this is educational for the program. Uh, when I came home, and I'm not going to say where I was living in England because I don't want to reflect back on the people, but when I came back to England, no one would talk to me. And I've got tears in my eyes again. Yeah. And what happened was um, I, I was staying in the house of, the, uh, of someone that I knew, and they wouldn't even talk to me. And finally, I pinned them against a wall, and I said, what is going on? And these people said, Michael, everyone's saying you went to the dark side. 
And I became suicidal. Now, this fits right in with the program, okay? And this is very, very personal, and I'm taking a risk in sharing this. But I became suicidal because I said, you know, I had all these wonderful experiences. I met all these beautiful people. And every, everyone that used to know me said, Michael, you've gone to the dark side. Or we're, we can't read you. We can't see you. <clears throat> and what happened, Leo, is I called one person I trusted who was a psychic and medium. Thank God I had that one person. And I said, I'm about ready to destroy myself, to kill myself. I said, I, I would never go to the dark side. And I was in tears. And this woman said to me, and I won't give you the stream of explicatives that she came out with, but she basically said, those mm -mm 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 spiritual people don't know their ass from a mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. And she said, Michael, when you went on this trip, you picked up uh, dark matter energy when you were in Hong Kong. No, when you were in, yeah, when you were in Hong Kong. And dark matter is not bad. It's just another form of matter. It's not negative. She said, when you went to Australia, you picked up uh, rainbow snake energy. And when you went to New Zealand, you picked up primordial soup energy. And she said, that trip accelerated your spiritual growth so much that you've left these people in the dust. They can't even read your energy anymore. Mm -hmm. And where they're speaking, let's say, English, you're speaking uh, Swahili or, or this other advanced language. Uh, not that Swahili is an advanced language, but you're, you're on such a different frequency and vibration that no one can read you in that group anymore. You've left them in the dust. And she said, Michael, pick up your things, Get out of there as soon as you can and find a new spiritual group that's more advanced. Now, I didn't expect to start revealing information at this level this early in the podcast, Leo. But all of us on a spiritual path, we reach a point in saying, are we explicative crazy or not? Yeah. Are, are we lost our minds? Is, is this reality? What is going on? We lose all of our reference points. We lose all of our, um, all of what we knew, all of the anchors to third dimensional reality. Yeah. And then we wonder, are we crazy or not? Are, have we lost our minds? It, it, and it can throw us off. Um, and this, again, is where you and I come into play, and many of the healers and, and, and advanced people who have had the experience have gone through the eye of the needle. Mm -hmm. And we're here saying, come to us. You're not crazy. Come to us. We've heard it all. We've seen levitation. We've seen, I haven't seen it personally, but I know it exists. Mm -hmm. I've seen spaceships. I've seen spirit. I've done exorcisms, da 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 da. We have seen it, so we know it's real, and we can take and explain explain to people in a rational way, or a spiritual way, or both, to help them understand what is really going on. And when people start moving from the sec from the third to the fourth to the fifth dimensions, and they start moving up, um you're losing touch with the foundation reality you were raised in. Um, I want to say something and then I'm going to let you talk. When I was in New Zealand many, many, many years ago, I just for the heck of it, I sat, I was sitting in the group and I said, what dimension are we playing at? Because the energy was very high and very pure. Mm -hmm. And we weren't playing on the third dimension. We weren't playing on the fourth dimension. We weren't even playing on the fifth dimension. Uh, they said, and this is going back 10 years ago, that we were playing on the 22nd dimension. Mm -hmm. So all the rules that are true on the third dimension or fourth dimension or fifth dimension, they keep all those rules keep changing as we increase our frequency and vibration. <clears throat> and as the guides and teachers come in and we earn the right, see, you, you, when you earn the right, 
and you serve humanity, then what happens is other guides and teachers come in and say, I want to work with you. You're making a difference on this planet. I want to help you. Or And or we as spiritual people say, spirit, work through me. Spirit, let me serve you. When that is done, then all of a sudden the spirit spirits watch you. And they say, are you, and I don't want to use the word worthy, are you committed? Do you, have you earned the right? And then spirit will start working with you a little bit. And they'll see how you use the information. Are you using it for personal gratification? Are you using it to serve humanity? And then they'll give you more information. And then finally, the ultimate is when you and spirit have a direct link where you're working 24-7, 365. Back to, back to you, Lee, or I'm going to be talking the whole time. <laughs> no, no uh, I find that fascinating, and I know other people will. Uh, I think one of the myths of our work is that it, it appears to be um, so easy. You know, I've had many people say, well, you know, you must have an easy life. You're psychic. You know what's coming. You can dodge the bullets. Um but that doesn't work that way for us. If anything, it's it's the opposite. Uh, you know, we get blinded, we get blocked, so we walk straight into that wall. Um, you know, and I, I, I've had comments, well, you know, you're psychic, you didn't see that coming, you know. Um, and and for, for people that are sensitive, that are working for spirit, um, we often, often have hard lives. And I was talking earlier about my wonderful childhood and, and uh, uh, on, on the spiritual side of it, uh, on the connected side of it, it was. Um, on other sides, um, it was difficult. Um, you know, my parents separated uh, when I was young and, um, and uh, 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 when I was nine, in fact, and that caused a lot of trauma. Um, to the family, you know, on various levels. And so through life, th there have been um, upheavals. Uh, the, the word that's been given to me at the moment is earthquakes, uh, real earth-shattering um, experiences, emotional experiences that do leave you. Um, uh, um, I think it's correct to say in some ways scarred, you know, and... and um, my childhood, in in that sense, um, was was very hard. There were lots of experiences, and I think they would be hard enough anyway. Um, but when you are sensitive, when you are open, you know, it, it's like someone can make a hurtful comment, and if you've got a bit of a thick skin, you know, which surprisingly we need. <laughs> You know, because there are a lot of comments made, and and, and we need to to um, have that thick skin. So it's kind of an opposing force. Um, but you know, if if you have a thick skin, then it kind of bounces off, and that's it. But as we feel those emotions, it, it, it's literally like being shot. You know, because it's not so much the words. It's the false, the spiritual false, uh, certainly if it's negative, that comes with that. Um, it is like being hit with a sledgehammer. And so when you are sensitive, there are lots of things that we have to contend with, which, you know, certainly at particular ages, we, we may not really understand them. And so we, we get affected emotionally um, a huge amount. A huge amount, um, and you and I work in in similar ways, and it's not really um, uh, uh, perhaps tolerated is the right word by some organisations. But um, I choose sometimes when somebody comes through, and there is so much love, and unless you've experienced that, there aren't really any words to 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 explain it. When that love comes from spirit, it is overwhelming. It's a tidal wave. And, and I have chosen that on occasions with, with messages and loved ones that come through to allow that. Um, and lots of organisations 
um, teach that you know uh, uh, you you need to be controlled. Um, you don't show that kind of emotion. You deliver the message, and, and I think the message is one thing, but something that that is is harder to put into words is that emotion that comes from spirit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and I think it's a beautiful thing. You know, they, they say a picture paints a thousand words, and, and of course it does. Um, but in the same way, emotions can paint so much when they come through. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and I have several bugbears about the way some mediums work. And, you know, when they connect and they go, well, your grandmother's here. You know, she loves you a lot. Well, of course your grandmother depends on family circumstances of course she does but that isn't proof but when a grandmother comes through and says something in particular or maybe uses a pet name for you um, and that connection is there the wonderful thing is the person you're connected with feels that emotion feels that love um, and so it, it, it's as much unsaid as said um, but to feel that love that we have both been blessed with, uh, not just personally, but when it comes through messages, I think it's a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's something that we, the student has to allow in themselves and allow it to, yeah, you might look stupid in front of a crowd of people when something comes through. Um, but I think if you allow tr truly spirit to connect in the way that they understand, I think much more than I do, um, I think is a wonderful thing. And it's the difference between delivering a message and delivering that love. And of course the healing that comes along with it as well. Um, excellent. Um, I'm taking so many notes because what you're saying is so important. Um, let me go back. Um, because let me, let me juxtaposition. Let me sh say something that's very, very different. Uh, I lived in England for many years. And what I noticed is a lot of platform mediums, a lot of mediums, they would, and some of them here in the United States, they focused on bringing a message through to prove that life continues after death. So in other words, they bring a message through from your aunt, your mother, your father, whatever. Mm -hmm. For me, what was the biggest shock was that the messages didn't come through that says, ah, these are the blocks in your body. This is what you need to do to spiritually grow. Um, so it wasn't about your life per mission and purpose. It wasn't about helping the person to grow spiritually. It wasn't confronting them on uh, dysfunctional habit patterns or anything else. And so although the messages came through, which were beautiful and important, there was a whole nother level that could have been done mm -hmm. had, the, had the mediums uh, focused on other areas other than what was trained they were trained to do or whatever. Now, let me back up here for a second. I was one of the trustees of the World Federation of Healing. And my God, that was one of the best organizations I've ever been, belonged to. And when I was a trustee, my biggest battle with them was saying, you have to teach people to charge money. I don't care if it's a donation. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's 10, 10 pounds, five pounds. I don't care. But what happened is, the World Federation of Healing had little old ladies and little old men, retired, many of them, who mm. really wanted to be of service. And they were doing free readings because they didn't believe in an energy exchange. And because of that, they couldn't pay their dues, which was $10, 10 pounds a year into, into the World Federation of Healing. And the organization, even though it offered the best insurance, it offered the best workshops and trainings it went under because it couldn't afford to stay afloat. So that's a whole nother area about charging and energy exchange. Um, however, um, for some reason I needed to say that. The other thing, when you're talking about love, um, 
there's different kinds of love. There's love that's, oh, you poor thing. Oh, you poor thing. Versus the love that says, I believe in you. I'm holding the energy for you. I'm holding that you are God expressing. Now, what is it that you're learning from this experience? What do you have to look at? What What is the message? What is the teaching? What is the gift? What is the the the, the golden nugget? And if you take a look at, at an oyster, uh, an oyster develops a pearl because there was a piece of sand inside that was irritating it. I'm irritant, yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> the oyster puts a coating on it, and that hardens, and then puts another coating, and another coating, and another coating, and that becomes a pearl. And a diamond is just a piece of lump of coal mm -hmm. that's been under extreme pressure. Duh. Leo, you and I are lumps of coal that have been changed into diamonds, <laughs> and so are many of our listeners. Um, the other point is, so so there's many ways of expressing love. I express unconditional love, and I've worked, um, I have worked in the UK, uh, a counselor actually brought a murderer to me. And I sat with the person for an hour and a half, and I only got in a couple of words because the person was talking so much. But the person said to me, the therapist said to me, the counselor said to me, Michael, you made more progress with this person in an hour than we've seen. Mm -hmm. And it was because I wasn't judging the person. We've all been light. We've all been dark. We've all done good things. We've all made mistakes. But we learn from them. People say, oh, I did this bad, and I did this wrong, and I did the other thing wrong. And I turn around to them and say, do you know something? I've blown up galaxies and solar systems. I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> but I've done it. I've, been, I, I've made a lot of mistakes. But it's not about whether you made mistakes or not. You were learning. Mm -hmm. And if you learn and say, I never want to do that again, that's, that's the key. Um, the other thing that's coming through very strongly is anyone that's an addict dealing with drugs, alcohol, whatever your addiction is, many highly spiritual people come in and are dealing with addictions. Just because someone's got an addiction or someone's got another challenge does not mean they're not very advanced spiritually or they're not a, a high spiritual soul. Um, but what they do when someone comes in that open or that aware, uh, they take on different karma on the earth to transmute. Um, a couple of other things, only the wounded healer heals. If you have gone through holy hell, you have been prepared to be a healer. And you have the knowledge, you have the experience, you have the, the knowledge firsthand of what someone is going through, so you can reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I want to say one more thing, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, Leo. Um, I have been a lightning rod. So I walk into a group, and if there's any um, hidden things uh, um, and people playing games, boom, it comes right to the surface. It bubbles up. Uh, just recently, I put a post up about offering uh, to train healers and asking for a group of advanced healers to come together so we could support each other. And I got holy hell for offering to do that for free and putting it out to the community. They actually took the post down because there were so many complaints from spiritual people. <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on on this planet? Back to you, Leo. So so all I'm saying is that there's a lot of things here, um, and you can see that Leo and I have a very broad background. We're coming from very similar but very different perspectives, and that will serve you. Back to you, Leo. Uh, absolutely. Um you know, one of the things that, that crossed my mind was that um, we all need to learn and we never stop learning. And, and especially mm -hmm. when you're spiritual and you're trying to work, you know, between these planes and worlds, 
um, there is um, so much to learn. I think learning is a part of it. I think the greater part of it is surrender, is surrendering to spirit and allowing them to give you the experiences that you need, good or bad. Um, because as you say, if it's an irritant, there's a reaction. And it's only when we've been through these things here now on this planet that the, that irritant can become a pole. Um, it's like we have to relearn the whole thing. Um, we don't bring usually those experiences from past lives. Go, Aha, I've done that. Okay, don't need it in this life. Doesn't work like that. Um, so, so there is there is an awful lot to learn. Um, I also, when I first started, uh, used to do readings free because, um, rightly or wrongly, I thought this is a gift. Um, it is something that God has given and has allowed to develop, and it's for other people. Um, and and Spirit taught me um, a good lesson with that. I began to lose uh, through illness myself, um, but other circumstances. Um, every job I had, um, I used to find it easy to find a job. You know, um, I'd have two or three different interviews and. I usually got the job. I picked them carefully, but I usually got the job. Um, and I always kept a job until I wanted to leave. There's very few times in my life that I, I've been sacked. And in fact, um, at the last count, not counting, and I don't count this as a job, it's a vocation, but not counting this <laughs> work, um, I did um, 47 different types of job. Um, which have all served me, certainly um, in a spiritual connection, uh, beautifully. And so, some I only stayed a day because the, the job itself was so negative or horrendous. Um, but uh, so I never had a problem getting or keeping a job un until that point. And that was when Spirit said, you need to be doing this work. You know, the other stuff um, earns money. It serves a small purpose, but now there's a bigger purpose. Um, and so I got to the point where I still needed to earn money, um, but was doing this work. So it became very hard for me um, initially to accept, uh, but obviously I, I began charging. And again, you, you know, th there was the old um, um, thoughts before that um, if you're good enough uh, as a medium, you'll get work and people will provide you. You know, they'll put you up while you're doing this demonstration or that demonstration. Uh, and the Arthur Finley College was um, originally based on, um, we'll get people in. Um, if, if you're good enough, then you don't need to worry about housing or money or anything. We will develop you. And it's a great idea, but it's not something that can... Uh, you know, unless you're very lucky, it's not something that you can work with in, in these um, days. And, and God knows, you know, the world needs more mediums. It needs more healers. Um, so that become um, very difficult. So it was an ideal um, that is great. But I think spirit began to realize that um, we need to earn money. Um, you know, uh, we've got to deal with this reality. We need food. We need shelter. Um, so um, that kind of dawned on me, and that's what happened. Um, I, I think it, it's interesting as well um, that you say, you know, that we need to allow these things to come through. Um, I'm a great believer in if spirit has a message for a person, they will find a way no matter what. And um, I stayed with the NFSHS, uh, the National Federation of Spiritual Healers. Um, and I, I was there, um, I think, a couple of weeks, if I remember correctly. And spirit would come through when a person um, came for healing and there would be a message there. And the reaction from the NFSHS was, you don't do that. We heal, or, or, you know, spirit heals, that's it. That's what they come for. And, and, and I argued with them because I said, look, you know, this person may accept spiritual healing. They may not ever go to a demonstration. They may not go and see a medium. And if spirit have deigned 
that they come here, they're going to get that message that they need because it's the only place they're going to get that contact. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and they put up all kinds of excuses. And my final answer to them was, who am I to decide if God says this is the contact, this is where they're going to get the message, who am I to say, God, you know, the NFS chess, they say no, sorry. Um, so um, I, I do feel um, that it's important. Uh, mediums, um, certainly in this country, uh, uh, from the platform, we're not supposed to give um, – either um, medical advice or say, you know, you, you've got a problem, um, maybe headaches or something, um, and, and you, you know, you, you need um, this kind of, of uh, medication or you need this bark remedy, you need this or, or that. We're not allowed to say that. And again, my, my feeling is if that person has come for messages and doesn't understand that bark remedies would help them and spirit are giving that, you know, who, again, who am I to deny that? So um, I've kind of worked it out with churches and they understand the way that I work and, and, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm still lucky enough to be going back. <laughs> but um, again, I think it, it's, you know, spirit will work the way that spirit works and, what I found with, with lots of organisations is that they get perhaps a bit top heavy. They start to create all these rules and regulations when actually spirit is spirit. You know, they want to pass information and they can help. Um, and I think it, it, it's becoming, we should become a little looser in that. You know, um, whatever we do, whether we're healers, whether we're mediums, it, it's the same energy from the same force. It's applied a slightly different way. Um, and I can't see why there should be all these walls and barriers. You know, you're a medium, you do this. Um, lots of mediums are healers. And, and, and we also heal by talking. You know, what's the difference? You know, um, and I know, you know, if we're talking about psychic surgery, that, that obviously there is a difference. But I mean, it, 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 it's all eternal love that comes through and is expressed in different ways. It's all from the same source. So, you, you know, I, I have problems sometimes, as you've um, hinted, you know, that, that um, uh, you do this and you don't do that. You know, um, you give messages, uh, um, you don't tell them about healing or something they need to do. Or even if it's as simple as go see a doctor, you know, it's, oh, we don't do that. And it's, I kind of understand it in the world we live in. But it makes no difference, you know. Who am I to countermand spirit? Leo, um, you just covered a world of information, and here's what I, I want to say. I want to summarize some of the things you said. Um, number one, the lower level spirits will come and blow in our face to pull our hair, move things around the house. A lot of lower level spirits are tricksters. And um, you want to go to the higher realms, you have to follow the laws, the spiritual laws of knocking the door shall open, asking you shall receive. So it's about asking spirit. I would like to be closer. I would like to learn more and inviting spirit in and spending time being quiet. I walk the beach a lot. I take my camera. Um Although I've been raised in all the biggest cities in the world, although I can travel and teach large groups and companies and corporations and whatnot, I value my quiet time. That's when I really connect. Or when someone says, I have a problem, can you help me? Then all of a sudden, boom, the information just comes to me almost instantly. Um, we talked, um, you talked about money. Um, I don't charge for the healing. I charge for my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it on air, and I probably shouldn't say it, but that's Michael. I, I say it. I've never turned a person away because they couldn't afford it. Never. I've turned people away because they didn't ask. Mm -hmm. I turned people away or didn't respond to people 
who didn't put in any effort. Mm -hmm. um, so if a person comes to me and says, Michael, I'm really committed. I really want to heal. Can you help me, please? I've always helped them. So the other thing that, that's happened for me is there's many times I've gone into a restaurant or gone into an air, went to fly on an airplane, and I said, I'm a healer. And they said, uh, it's still the same price. So, um, you know, when, when I was working in the corporate world, um, I was making very good money. I had a four-bedroom house. I had rent house. I had stocks. I had uh, a company car, an unlimited expense account. And since I became a healer, I've got none of those things. I've sold the house and, you know, I've got a car that's workable. I'm renting a small apartment. Uh, I don't have the income that I had uh, when I was working in the corporate world. And, uh, you know, the other thing, and I should have said this when I talked about traveling the world, people said, oh, you're so lucky. You're, you know, look at all the places you've been. Oh, Michael, you know, da, 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 da. I wish I could be like you. And I turn around to him. I said, yeah, you could have been like me. All you have to do is give up having a home, having animals, having security, having a family, um, having a, a steady job and a steady income. Yeah, you can be just like me and, and, and just travel with a backpack and not know where your next meal's coming from. And um, I'll tell you, Leo, that was a lesson. I met a lot of wonderful people, uh, but there were limited, lots of times when I was very, very scared and insecure uh, and didn't know where my next meal was coming from. Um, the, uh, um, I wanted to talk about organizations. Um, actually I could talk about religion. I could talk about anything. Um, I don't know of one spiritual leader that wanted to start a movement. I don't know of one person that wanted to start a religion. It was the people after them that wanted to formalize, organize it, put a structure to it, and say good, bad, right, or wrong. Now, we are in a time when the medical community and other communities want to really control um, healing, uh, complementary therapies, etc., and um, although I think that the uh, NSFH is a good organization, I lived in England, like I said, for many, many years, and I would not join it. Um, that I'm not saying to anybody else whether you should or shouldn't. What I'm saying to you is I am actually forming an organization of healers, and I've actually got to have a commitment to train a million healers on the planet. Wow. with where we're using our gifts in a good and sacred way. And, you know, Leo, um, I'm going to say a couple of things. Um, I probably break almost all the rules of counseling and therapy by the way I work. However, the results I get in one hour is what other people may get in months, years, decades, or may never even get because I'm willing and my commitment to spirit is whatever spirit tells me, I will give to the person. Um, I've done a healing on uh, a person that's alive today who is actually Merlin the magician in a past life and also on Judas. And sometimes I am the softest person and just so gentle and quiet. And there's other times when I've yelled and screamed at the person, what are you doing to yourself? Mm -hmm. Why? And, and again, this is not me judging what to do or when to do it. I'm being guided by spirit. I'm almost being overshadowed. Mm -hmm. And you and I have talked enough times where you know is, there's times when I'm talking to you, I just burst into tears because of the energy coming through. 
Yeah. So um, I know that organizations um, are controlled by, um, and they don't want to get in trouble legally or otherwise. So they have all these rules and regulations. Yeah. And I think that there are a lot of appropriate things to say. Um, and we have to be, I don't want to use the word careful. Uh, we have to be attentive mm. to the way we communicate it so we don't trigger the other person or um, step on a landmine uh, yeah. is, all, is all that I can say. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that I've met some phenomenal healers, absolute phenomenal healers that were living in abject poverty to where they relied on everyone else to feed them and take care of them. And I don't believe that's what a spiritual, the spiritual path is about. I, I think it's about the balance between spiritual and material. Um, go back to you. Go ahead. It feels like you've got some more to say. I think, I think you're absolutely right. And I'm just being mindful of the time here. Um, um, the broadcast, uh, uh, if we don't end properly, it's going to kind of end by itself. Go, go for it. But, um, you know, it, it's it's very interesting that you, you mentioned Judas because – um, I, I was talking to to my group um, many years ago, and um, uh, the thought of Judas Iscariot came forward, uh, and I said that that Judas Iscariot was a wonderful, wonderful, um, highly, highly elevated soul, and so many people were shocked by that, and I said, well, you know, obviously. There, there was the intention between him and the person who incarnated as Jesus. And it was so, so brave of Judas because you talk to Christians now, 2,000 years later, you know, um, he's a scourge. Um, people demean his name. Um, he is not treated with any reverence is treated with hatred this is the man who allowed jesus to be crucified that was a soul who understood that 2000 3000 4000 years later as judas he would be hated hmm. and that energy goes out to him and he took on that responsibility and I knew from that that he was such an elevated soul who was given everything, um, you know. And, and and sorry, I think we need to go into this in a lot more detail in another one, Leo. Yeah, yeah. And I'm uh, I'm concerned about closing out this this one uh, appropriately, and let's let's talk about that, and we can talk about Merlin in in the, the next one. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it just reminded me of that perspective of, you know, people have this image or, you know, he betrayed. Um, he took on um, a huge responsibility. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we're, <laughs> nearly <there. laughs> we're nearly there. So um, uh, I want to thank you for everything you've said. And um, it, it certainly opened up my eyes and it, it's, it's made connections and reconnections again of how wonderful spirit is. And, and you know, people say I want experience, but they, they tend to want their kind of experience. And mm -hmm. we, again, uh, we learn, of course, we learn, uh, you and I, but we surrender. And I think that's the first thing for people to understand is if you're going to do this work, if you're going to be connected, there's an awful lot to give up. You know, our pre, um, predisposition, uh, predisposition to, you, you know, biases and, and, and those things that, that are indoctrinated in this world. And it's, it's very much surrender first. Well, I'm going to, you can use the word surrender and I'm going to say take personal responsibility mm -hmm. and be open and receptive. So um, we're looking at it the same way, but differently. Yeah. Close, close, <laughs> close it out, Leo. Close it out before they close us out. 
<laughs> okay, well, um, it, it's been wonderful, and uh, we shall be doing this weekly. So, if you're interested in this, it's a mini series of twelve weeks. I, I get the feeling that this will go on for much longer than twelve weeks. I think this is going. To I think for the rest of our lifetime, Leo. <laughs> It's another contract we've taken on. But um, anyway, I want to thank you. And um, if you're interested, uh, you can donate. Um, there is, um, uh, where's this guy? Yeah, you can donate to PayPal me. You can look there if you want to. There's, there's no urgency or urging to do so, but if you want to. And we shall be back next week with number two um, episode. And God bless you all. Take care of each other and love each other. Take care and and just allow the love, the support, spiritual knowledge, the gifts to come to you and know that now and always you are worth it. You are important. You're important to yourself, you're important to us, you're important to spirit, you're important to humanity. In a good and sacred way, I honor and bless you. Om Natakwiasin, Namaste, all my relations, Om Shante, many blessings. Many blessings and thank you so much. Whew. <sighs>